Hello, mighty companions. This is Earl Purdy, and I'm here to do, I'm here to do hardcore course in miracles. Tonight we're going to talk about the rewards of God, the rewards of truth, the rewards of God on page 67. I want to welcome my mighty companions here on Facebook Live. This is a hardcore course in miracles presentation for those who really love the Course in Miracles and those who are studying a Course in Miracles. This is a more advanced sharing. You and me were not that far apart Yeah, we we'll be the same heart Hello Sarah, hello Mark We from the start Oh yeah Tell me, can you hear it? Can you hear it, mighty companions? Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it and know that we are one. Yeah, 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 we are one. Now let's come to. Welcome, mighty companions. When you choose him, you know you choose me too. When everyone becomes a part of you, and then you will know that love is who I am. You and me were not that far apart. Welcome, mighty companions, to Hardcore. Tell me, can you feel hardcore. Horse and miracles. Put your arms around it. And know that we are one. We are one, Holy Spirit. Yeah, 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 we are one. Oh, we are one. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. I'm Earl Raj Purdy. Welcome to this advanced class on A Course in Miracles. We're live so you can talk to each other and you can also communicate with me. Just remember, you don't have to believe it, accept it or welcome it. Some of it's going to be hard to believe. Some of it's going to be quite startling. You're not being asked by The Course in Miracles to judge and analyze the ideas at all. It's the use of the ideas. Using the ideas will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Guess what? You and me were not that far apart. Yeah, we're beating the same heart. We've been together from the start. Oh, yeah. Tell me, can you hear it? Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it. Know that we are one. You and I are one, and I'm so glad about it. You and I are one, and I love that. Yeah, yeah, we are one. I am you. I am you. And you are me. Hello, mighty companions. It is so good to be with you. And let me let me take a second here to get everything all in line. There we go. 
want you to know that I am thrilled to be here with you. Don't forget to share the video. Don't forget to share the video because we are so blessed to have each other. This is an advanced course in miracles class. So I'm assuming that those of you who are online are studying the course in miracles and you have an intense interest and love in the course in miracles. I've been doing the course in miracles almost 40 years and 30 years of that I have been totally dedicated to it. I have been sharing it full time. I'm a full time course in miracles teacher. That's all I've done in the world because I love it and it's my calling and each one of you have a calling so we're gonna be we're gonna be on page 67 the rewards of God page 67 page 67 the rewards of God that is chapter 4 section 6 chapter 4 section 6 the, re re the rewards of God page 67 but first, I'm going to just do the introduction. It's just a paragraph. The introduction to the Course in Miracles says, this is the Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles is a required course. Only the time you take the Course in Miracles is voluntary. Free will doesn't mean that you can establish the curriculum. Do you know that free will means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for the meaning of love is beyond what can be taught. The Course in Miracles does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. I say, the goal of the course is to remove the blocks to the awareness of the presence of love. That's the purpose of A Course in Miracles, to remove the blocks in our mind and in our hearts and in our perception to the awareness of God's presence, which is the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. Your natural inheritance is to become aware of the presence of love. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This Course in Miracles can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. That was the introduction to the Course in Miracles. We're going to be doing the rewards of God. I want to welcome all of my mighty companions online. It's so good to be with all of you. I would like you to take a moment now. This is an advanced class, so I would like you to take a moment to breathe and get centered. Breathe, focus in on your breath. Focus in on your breath and get centered. Tune out. Tune out everything else right now. Allow yourself to focus in. And I'm going to go through the first paragraph on the rewards of God. And you know that I move slow because I'm much more interested in us hearing what the Course is trying to tell us than how much material that I cover. It would be better for you to remember one sentence in A Course in Miracles and use it consistently than to try to speed through a lot of it that you don't understand. Another thing that I'm going to suggest, because I've been sharing this for three decades, don't waste a lot of time. Don't waste a lot of time trying to analyze A Course in Miracles. It's the biggest waste of time that Course in Miracles students go through is analyzing it. When, as soon as you find yourself analyzing it, stop and catch your breath and breathe. And I'm going to take it a sentence at a time because this first paragraph is so important. The first paragraph on page 67 says, The ego does not recognize the real source of threat. And we're only talking about the fear-based part of the mind and the love-based part of the mind. So the ego is the fearful mind, the frightened mind the separated man. 
So the course is saying the part of our mind that is afraid does not recognize the real source of threat. And if you associate yourself with the ego, the part of your mind that believes that it's afraid and where it is separate, the Course says you don't understand the situation as it is. So what does the Course mean when it says you do not understand the situation as it is? If you associate yourself with your fear, if you feel really connected with fear or anger or guilt or separation, then you don't understand the situation as the situation really is in your life right now. Whatever the situation is, you don't understand the situation according to the Course. If you associate yourself with just being a body, if you think of yourself as just being a body, if you think of yourself as just being a man, or if you think of yourself as just being a woman, if you just think of yourself as being a man or a woman, but you're not seeing yourself as a spiritual being first, if you associate yourself primarily with the part of your mind that believes that it is separate, if you associate yourself with the part of the mind that has a social security number, if you, if you associate yourself with your frightened mind, then the Course says you do not understand the situation as it is. So only your allegiance to it gives the ego any power over you. Only your allegiance to the ego gives your ego any power over you. Only your ego. Your ego has power over you because you associate yourself with it. The ego is the thought system of the world. The ego is the thought system of the world. The ego is the thought system of fear. The Course says, only your allegiance to fear gives fear any power over you. That's the same as saying only your allegiance to the ego gives the ego any power over you. So why is it that fear has any power over you? Only your allegiance to it. Only your allegiance to the ego and to fear gives it any power over you. So what is it that gives the ego power over you? You are loyal to the ego. You're loyal to your fear. I, Jesus says, I have spoke, Jesus of the Course says, I have spoken of the ego as if the ego were a separate thing acting on its own. So the Course says, I've spoken of the fearful part of you, the ego, as if it were a separate thing acting on its own. The Course talks about the ego as if the ego is a separate thing because <clears throat> it says this was necessary to persuade you that you cannot dismiss the ego lightly and must realize how much of your thinking is ego directed. I've spoken of the ego as if it were a separate thing acting on its own. So the Course says right here, I'm always talking about the ego as if the ego is a thing that's se acting separately on its own. But it's, then the Course says, well, it was necessary to talk to you as if your ego was something that was separate from you acting on its own. Why? Because I don't want you to dismiss the ego lightly. I don't, I don't want you to dismiss the fear-based part of your mind lightly. I don't want you to dismiss the, the world's thinking, which is the ego, lightly. And I want you to realize how much of your thinking is directed by your ego. So do you know that it's really important for you to recognize how much of your thinking is directed by the ego? It's really important that you get in touch with just how much of your thinking is directed by fear. It's really, really, really important for you to get in touch with how much of your thinking is directed by the world. How much of your thinking is directed by fear. <clears throat> you cannot dismiss your ego lightly. You cannot dismiss your fear lightly. Do you know that you cannot dis dismiss your fear lightly? You cannot dismiss your ego lightly. The Course says it talks to us as if the ego were a thing separate acting on its own because the Course says, I don't want you to take your ego lightly. I don't want you to take your thinking lightly. I don't want you to think your, I don't want you to take your fear-based thinking lightly. He says, 
you must realize how much of your thinking is ego directed. We can't safely let it go at that. We can't safely let it go at you realizing how much of your thinking is directed by your ego. So I want you to realize how much of your thinking is directed by your ego. But I also can't let it go at that. I can't, I can't tell you that your thinking is being directed by your fear and your ego and just leave it at that. Now remember, The Course in Miracles is only talking about two things. The fear, the fearful part of your thinking, the fearful part of the mind, and the loving part of the mind. It's only ever talking about perception, and it's talking about love, and it talks about fear. That's important because people read The Course in Miracles and they think that it's really too difficult to read or understand. That's why I take it slow, because I want you to realize it's not. That's just a trick of your ego. The Course is only talking about fear or love. It's only talking about oneness or separation. That's it. That's it. So it says right here, the ego, the fearful part of the mind, doesn't recognize the real source of threat. And if you associate yourself with the fearful part of your mind, you don't understand the situation as it is if you associate yourself with the fearful part of your mind. It's only your allegiance to your fear that gives your fear any power over you. It's just your allegiance to your ego that gives it any power over you. I've spoken of the ego as if it was a separate thing. You've spoken, I've spoken of your fear as if it was a separate thing acting on its own. The Course in Miracles talks to you as if your ego is a separate thing acting on its own because the Course in Miracles is trying to get you to not dismiss your ego lightly. Don't dismiss your way of thinking lightly. You don't realize how much of your thinking is directed by the world. You don't realize how much of your thinking is directed by fear. You don't realize how much of your thinking is directed by the past, but we can't safely let it go at that. However, because if we just keep let you keep thinking that your ego is something separate from you, you will regard yourself as necessarily conflicted as long as you are here or as long as you believe that you are here. So why would you be conflicted as long as you are here or as long as you believe that you are here? If we just leave it at you thinking that your ego is something separate from you. So what is the ego? What is the ego? The ego is nothing more than a part of your belief about yourself. Your ego is a part of your belief about yourself. So the ego is a belief. 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 The ego isn't a real entity. The ego is not a real entity. The ego is not something that you do not have any ability to direct. The ego is a belief. The ego is a frightening belief. The ego is a, a fearful, frightening idea. The ego is an idea. The ego is a belief. The ego is a fearful belief. The ego is a frightening belief. The ego is a fearful 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 belief. So when you say the ego, you're just saying, I have a belief about money. My ego. My ego is affecting my finances. My fearful thoughts are affecting my finances. My ego is giving me a hard time in my relationship. My fearful thoughts are giving me a hard time in my relationship. My ego made me lose my temper today. My fearful thoughts made me lose my temper today. The ego is just a fearful thought. The ego is just a fearful thought. The ego is just a wrong-minded thought. The ego is just an untrue thought. The ego is just a guilty thought. The ego is just a angry thought. The ego is an attack thought. The ego is a thought. But the Course says, I talk to you as if the ego is a separate thing because I don't want you to take it lightly. Your thinking has a big impact 
on everything that you are experiencing. And the ego is a thought system. The ego is a fearful, separate way of thinking. The ego is just a way of thinking. The ego is just a way of thinking. The ego is just a part of your belief about yourself. Now, now check out the next sentence. The next sentence says, your other life has continued without interruption. The Course says, you have another life. You have a loving life. And that loving life has continued without interruption. And there's another you. There's another part of you. There's a, another life in you that has been and always will be totally unaffected by your attempts to dissociate it or forget it. So, what is that first paragraph telling us? The first paragraph is telling us that the frightening, the frightening, frightened part of your mind doesn't recognize the real threat. And the Course says, you don't understand the situation as the situation is. Why? Because your allegiance to your ego, your allegiance to your fear, your allegiance to your past, these are all ego definitions, uh, that's what gives your ego power over you. So the only thing that gives your ego power over you is you're loyal to it. The only thing that gives a way of thinking that causes you pain, power over you, is your allegiance to it. Then it says, I've spoken of the ego. I've spoken of your frightened thoughts. I've spoken of your ego as if your ego were a separate thing acting on its own. Speaking of your ego as if it's a separate thing acting on its own was necessary to persuade you that you cannot dismiss the ego lightly. So how do you not dismiss the ego lightly? You have to realize how much of your thinking is directed by your ego. You have to realize you think a lot of your thinking is directed by your fear. A lot of your thinking is directed by fear. But we can't safely let it go at that. He says, however, or you will regard yourself as necessarily conflicted as long as you are here or as long as you believe you are here. Your ego, your ego is nothing more than part of your belief about yourself. But you have another life. You have a loving life. And that loving life has continued without interruption. So you have a loving self. You have a loving life that has continued without interruption. And you have a, another life that has been and always will be totally unaffected by your attempts to forget it. So there's a part of you that is love. There's a part of you that is truth. There's a part of you that is free. There's a part of you that is powerful. And it's totally unaffected by your ego. There's a part of you that is strong and powerful and spiritual and divine that is totally unaffected by your attempts to dissociate it or forget it. There's a, there is a loving self, a, power, a powerful self. There's another life in you. And that life in you will, will be totally unaffected by your attempts to dissociate it. So, any questions about that first paragraph and if you do have a question type a Q first if you type a Q first I'll know that it's a question about what I've just covered in this paragraph because this is a very very important paragraph so I'll see if there's any questions about that first paragraph don't forget your ego is nothing but a part of your belief about yourself. If you're in your ego, if you're in the part of you that goes through fear, if you're in the part of you that goes through fear and anger and anxiety, then he says you don't really recognize what the real threat is. You don't really recognize what's really upsetting you. You don't really understand the situation. So if a person feels afraid, if a person is in their ego, the Course says the first thing that you need to recognize when you're in your ego is that you do not understand the situation. So instead of, so when I'm in my ego, when I become afraid, when I become angry, that means I'm in my ego, the very first thing that I do is to remind myself that that means I don't understand what's going on. If you are afraid, you really don't understand the situation as it is. If there's a situation in your life right now that you feel a lot of fear around, 
It means you don't understand the situation as it is. So what's giving your fear power over you? What is it that's giving your fear power over you? What's giving your fear power over you is your allegiance to it. What's giving your fear power over you is not the situation that you think you are going through. What is, and, and, be, and also the thing I want you to realize is that being angry and being afraid, there's nobody feeling your anger but you. There is no one feeling your upset but you. There is no one feeling your ego but you. There is no one feeling your ego but you. There's no one feeling your anger but you. There's no one feeling your hurt but you. So when you, are, when you have allegiance to your ego, which means when you are loyal to your upset, when you are loyal to your fear, that's what's giving it power over you, not the situation that you think you're upset about. Also, we were told that the ego is really not a separate thing acting on its own. Your ego is just a part of your belief and part of your beliefs about yourself. And there's another part of you. There is a real part of you that absolutely is totally unaffected by everything that you're upset about. There is a part of you that never gets upset about anything that, you are up, that your ego is upset about. Jim says, yes, Raj, tell me what was giving my fear power over me. Jim, what was giving your fear power over you is your allegiance to it, your loyalty to your fear, your insistence on getting upset because people are not acting out your script. The Course in Miracles says all anger is nothing but getting upset with people because they're not acting out your script. So anger has no justification because anger is always coming from our fear. And the only thing that gives our fear and anger power over us is our allegiance to it. You can safely say whatever it is you're upset about. Now, remember, we're talking about this paragraph, and we're talking about understanding what this paragraph is saying. And this paragraph is telling us that your ego, your anger, is coming from your loyalty to your anger, that your anger is coming from your ego, and your ego is a way of thinking. So it's your way of thinking that has power over you. And your allegiance to your fearful, angry way of thinking that is what's giving it power over you. But the Course says, guess what? You have another life. You have another self. And that self is your real self. And that self is totally unaffected by your attempts to dissociate it. And the Course says to dissociate it means to forget. So therefore, there's a part of you that's totally loving, that is totally unaffected by your attempts to forget it. There, you may, you, there's a part of you that wants to forget how loving you are. There's a part of you that wants to forget how great you are. There's a part of you that wants to forget that you're connected to God and that you're connected to love. That part of you is totally unaffected by your ego. So there's a part of you that is never affected by your guilt. There's a part of you that's never affected by your anger. There's a part of you that's never affected by any thoughts of hurt or attack, which is the ego. The ego is nothing but fearful thoughts. <clears throat> Remember, if you have a question, first type a Q, because that way it's easy for me to glance down and see what, a, what, what the question is, okay? This is Hardcore Course in Miracles. This is, this is a time that we come together to do deep study of A Course in Miracles. It's not necessarily for a, a beginner, even though everybody is welcome, because I'm going to really take it slow and I'm going to stay focused on the subject and I'm not going to get pulled off on a tangent. I want us to stay focused, stay focused, stay focused on what is what is Jesus trying to tell us in this paragraph? What is love trying to tell us in this paragraph? That's right, Kathy. If you are, if you are upset, there's another part of you that's completely at peace in itself. There's another part of you that's totally loving there's, in other words, there's another part of you that never gets caught up in all this stuff that you think you're going through. Okay, so we're on page 67. 
in the rewards of God in chapter 4 of the Course in Miracles in the Foundation for Inner Peace. Paragraph 2 says, in learning to escape from illusions, in learning to escape from false ideas, what is it that you need to do? Okay, so if you want to escape from illusions, if you want to escape from fears, if you want to escape from upsets, I'm constantly giving you Course in Miracles definitions for these terms. In learning to do what? To escape from illusions, what do you do? Well, your debt to your brother is something you must never forget. So what is it that you must never forget? Your debt to another. If you want to escape from your fear, then you must never forget the debt that you owe to all your brothers and sisters and that all your brothers and sisters owe to you. It's the same debt that you owe to Jesus. So there's a debt I owe to you and there's a debt I owe to my invisible teacher. There is a debt that I owe to everyone and there's a debt that everyone owes to me. We need to understand that we're all indebted to each other if we're going to learn to escape from the ego. If we're going to escape from illusions, if we are going to escape from fear, if we're going to escape from anger, if in learning to escape from illusions, I'm on page 67, taking it slow, in learning to escape from illusions, in learning to escape whatever is upsetting you right now, in learning to escape in learning to escape from whatever is upsetting you right now, your debt to the other person is something you must never forget. It's the same debt that you owe me. So that means whenever you act egotistically towards another, whenever you act fearfully toward another, whenever you act angrily towards another, whenever you act with separation towards another, you are throwing away the graciousness of your indebtedness. Whenever you act egotistically, you are throwing away your indebtedness and the holy perception that it would produce. So if I recognized that I'm indebted to you because you are here to help me wake up to who I really am and to teach me the meaning of love, and I'm here to also do the same thing for you. We are here to pay a debt with each other, the debt of love. You owe me love, I owe you love. You owe yourself love, you owe me love, you owe others love. I owe you love, I owe me love, I owe others love. So if I want to get past my ego, if I want to get past my fear, if I want to get past my upset, it says that I must not throw away the graciousness of my indebtedness and the holy, which is innocent, loving perception it would produce. So where does loving perception come from? It comes from knowing I owe you love and you owe me love. The Course says it right there. Whenever you act egotistically towards another, you are throwing away the graciousness of your indebtedness and the holy perception that that in gracious indebtedness would produce. <sighs> the term holy can be used here because as you learn how much you are indebted to the whole sonship, which includes me, Jesus, you come as close to knowledge as perception can. So do you want to come close to knowledge? Do you want to come close to knowledge? Yes, I do. Okay, how do I come close to knowledge? How do I come close to knowledge? By realizing that I am indebted to you. I owe you love and you owe me love. I owe you truth and you owe me truth. That's how I began to see you in a loving way. Um, there's something I want to say right now. Your ego is a belief. Your ego is a thought system. Your ego is a way of thinking. Fear is a thought system. Fear is a way of thinking. Fear is a way of thinking. 
Being upset is a way of thinking. Being upset is a way of thinking. Your ego needs you to stay upset about one thing or another for your ego to exist, for your frightening, angry, upsetting feelings and thoughts to exist. Your ego needs to keep you upset about something all the time. There's a part of you, there's a part of your mind called the ego. It's a belief in your mind. That belief in fear and anger and upset called the ego. It needs you to have allegiance to it. You need to be, you have to be loyal to your ego for your ego to have power over you. For your fear and upset to have power over you, you have to be loyal to it. So your ego is always trying to keep you upset about something. The ego is the part of you that's always upset about something. The ego is the part of your thinking, the part of you that is always upset about one thing or another. That is fear. Your upset is fear. Your anger is fear. Your lack is fear. Your sickness is fear. Any form of limitation is fear. The ego is another name for fear. It's another name for anger. It's another name for upset. So every time you're upset, you're in your ego. But there is another part of you. There is a powerful, loving, divine part of you that is totally unaffected by all of your attempts to forget about it. There is a love in you that is going to be there, that is always there, that will always be there no matter how much you try to forget it by getting lost off in your ego. Another thing, mighty companion, I want you to hear me say this to you. I've been working with this material for 40 years and people listen to me, listen to me. You're never upset for the reason you think you're upset. You're only upset because you're listening to your ego, which means you're listening to fearful thoughts. You're listening to fearful, upsetting thoughts. That's what got, that is always what has you upset. It is never the physical circumstance. It is never the physical person that is upsetting you. It is your ego that is upsetting you. And your ego is your belief about yourself. There is some belief you have about yourself there is some belief you have about the other person, and it is that belief that is the ego that is upsetting you. And so we were told that in learning to escape from illusions, your debt to your brother is something you must never forget. So what is it that you must never forget? Your debt to your brother. When you're studying the Course in Miracles, take it slow. Watch what I did. Watch, watch me again. In learning to escape from illusions, your debt to your brother is something you must never forget. So then you go, well, what is it that I must never forget? Your debt to your brother. Why is it that I must make sure that I don't forget my debt to my brother? Because I can only learn to escape from illusions. I can only escape from fear if I remember that I owe you love and you owe me love. When we start giving each other love, when we start to give each other love, when we start to give ourselves love, we will escape from illusions. And illusions are fears and upset. So how do you escape from fear and upset? You escape from fear and upset by realizing, in most cases, the very person that you're upset with, you need to remember that you owe them love. Now, the Course in Miracles teaches that love means appreciation, that love means full appreciation. So everywhere you see the word love, you could substitute the, word full, the words full appreciation, and then you would have more of the Course in Miracles definitions of love. So the Course in Miracles definition of love is full appreciation. So if you want to know what I owe you and what you owe me. I owe you full appreciation and you owe me full appreciation. 
And we were told that if we fully appreciated each other, if we fully loved each other, we would escape from illusions. And illusions are, are our fears and our upsets. So the way that you escape from a fear and upset is not by trying to get the other person to act out your script. You don't get you don't get past illusions. You don't get past your fears. You don't get past your upsets by trying to get the other person to speak or act differently. You get past the upset. You get past the anger by recognizing that you owe that person full appreciation and they owe you full appreciation. It says right here that whenever you act egotistically, which is fearfully, towards another, you are throwing away the gracious indebtedness and the holy perception that the gracious indebtedness would produce. The term holy can be used here because as you learn how much you are indebted to the whole sonship, and the sonship is the family of God, I need to realize I am indebted to you and I'm indebted to the whole family of God. That's when you come close to knowledge. So according to the course, you don't really know what's going on as long as you don't realize that everybody around you deserves your full appreciation and you deserve the full appreciation of everyone around you. So from a Course in Miracles perspective, a person that has knowledge a person that has wisdom is a person that knows that they owe a debt to all of their brothers and sisters in this world. That I owe you the debt of love. I owe you the debt of full appreciation. And you owe me the debt of love. And you owe me the debt of full appreciation. And we owe the debt of love and the debt of full appreciation to everybody. So when you get to the point that you are fully appreciating, the more you are fully appreciating, the more you are loving, the more you are giving love, that's how smart you are. So a person isn't any more smart than they are giving full appreciation and giving love. Then the Course says at the point that you have a loving perception, at the point that you have a holy perception, it says, the gap is then so small, the what gap? The gap between knowledge and perception. The gap between knowing the truth and seeing the truth is so small that knowledge can easily flow across the gap and obliterate the gap between knowledge and perception forever. So let's go back. Okay, if you want to skate, let's say that you're upset about something right now. Let's say that there's something that you are worried about. Let's say that there's some illusion that's bothering you right now. Well, the first thing you need to do is think about how indebted you are to everyone around you. And don't ever forget that you're indebted to everyone around you. You're indebted to give love and they're indebted to give love. Also, when we give each other love, when we give each other full appreciation, then at that point, the Course in Miracles says to us that we are as close to knowledge as you can get. You are as close to wisdom that you can get when you realize that you owe everyone full appreciation and for no other reason that they remind you of the truth. And everyone owes you full appreciation. If you are a person who recognizes that, because love means full appreciation. The indebtedness is to realize that I owe you love. You are a part of me. I am a part of you. You are God. You are divine. I am divine. I am innocent. You are innocent. I am beautiful. You are beautiful. So I owe you that. I owe you full appreciation. I am here to pay a debt. And the debt is the debt of love, the debt of truth. So and if you don't fully appreciate me, and if I don't fully appreciate you, a really interesting way to say it is that we're just being dumb. At that point, we're not being very smart. Because if we want to escape from illusions, if we really want to escape from the ego, if we really want to escape from fear, what is it that we must not forget? You must not forget your 
debt you owe to everyone, the debt of love, the debt of truth, the debt of full appreciation. And when you are a person and you absolutely recognize that you're indebted to everybody in a loving way, the Course says at that point, you are as close to knowledge as you can get being in the body, seeing through perception. The Course teaches that there is perception, which is the way you are choosing to see things, and then there is knowledge that is the truth and it's stable and it never changes. Perception always changes. Perception always changes. It always goes through variations. So the Course says perception is not knowledge because knowledge is permanent. Knowledge is certain. Knowledge is stable. Knowledge does not change, but perception always changes. So the Course in Miracles is helping us go from a fearful perception to a loving perception. And then from a loving perception, we go to the knowledge of love. So that's paragraph two, that's two paragraphs. Now, is there any question about these first two paragraphs that I've covered? If you have a question, uh, then put a Q and then ask the question. Then I can glance down and I'll easily know when you're asking me a question. Some of the comments are the debt of love, the debt of truth, the debt of full appreciation. At that point, that's right, Jim, at that point you are as close to knowledge that you will get in this form, in this world that we're in. Diana says, we must not forget the debt of love, the debt of truth, the debt of appreciation. Love does not ever change, just like knowledge never ever changes. The, there's a line in the Course in Miracles that says, what can change was never love. If the love can change from love, it wasn't really love. It, it, there's no such thing as I love you, but now I don't love you. Love never changes. Love never changes. So it's no such thing as I really loved that person two years ago, but I don't love them now. Love never changes. Perception changes. The way that you see a person changes. Specialness changes. Whenever I see two human beings who believe they are human beings and they believe that they are separate human beings and they say to each other, I love you, and that love doesn't include any other beings, that is just specialness. The Course in Miracles is trying to get us to understand that love is knowledge. Love doesn't change. Uh, if I'm acting egotistically toward you, then I, if I'm acting angrily toward you, if I'm feeling fear and upset with you, then I am forgetting the fact that I owe you full appreciation. I, there's something I'm learning with you. There's some way that you are blessing me, but I don't see it. So I'm not getting a chance to express my indebtedness. But if I see something about you that evokes love in me, then I know that I'm coming really close to knowledge. You are not a wise person if you're upset and ungrateful. So an ungrateful person is a person who has forgotten the debt of love that they owe to everyone around them. An ungrateful person is an angry person. An ungrateful person is a person that's worrying. An ungrateful person is a, is a person that's feeling guilty. An ungrateful man is the ego man. The ego is a thought. The ego is a way of thinking. The ego is a frightening, fearful thought system. Okay, I'm going to take it slow. I'm going to take it slow. This is an advanced class. This is an advanced Course in Miracles class. An advanced Course in Miracles class is a slow, take it one sentence at a time. 
and stay focused Course in Miracles class. That's what makes it hardcore. Okay, take the Course in Miracles one sentence at a time. The next sentence says, paragraph three on page 67 says, you have very little trust in me as yet. Jesus of the Course in Miracles is saying to us, you don't have a lot of trust in me yet. Jesus says, you don't have a, you know you don't have a lot of trust in the Jesus of the Course if you can't even say the name Jesus. If the very word Jesus brings up resistance, how could you possibly have trust in Jesus if you can't even think of the if, if you can't even think of Jesus in a peaceful way, certainly you are not at the point that you are feeling appreciation and appreciation for Jesus. And I know Jesus is a trigger word for a lot of people. It was a trigger word for me because of the erroneous things I learned when I was a child in my religious upbringing. But I'm talking about the Jesus of A Course in Miracles, the Jesus that channeled through Helen to give us A Course in Miracles. That Jesus is saying, you guys have very little trust in me as yet. So it would be great if just to be honest, if a person said to themselves, I don't have a lot of trust in Jesus yet, which is the same as saying, I don't have a lot of trust in love yet. I don't have a lot of trust in Jesus yet. And that's what Jesus says. You have very little trust in me as yet, but the trust in me will increase. So what is it that will give you more and more trust in the Jesus of a course in miracles? What is it? Do you want to have more trust in Jesus? Do you want to get past the blocks to trusting in Jesus of the Course in Miracles, which is a totally loving, unconditionally loving Jesus. Well, right there, it tells you how to do it. If you want to have more trust in Jesus, uh, it said, Jesus says, well, your trust in me will increase as you turn more and more often to me. See, the more that I go to Jesus for guidance, instead of my ego for guidance, then I'll trust Jesus more and more. Another way you could put that is this. Now watch, remember the Course is talking about love or fear. He says, you have very little trust in love. See, Jesus is love. So you have very little trust in love as yet, but your trust in love will increase as you turn more and more often to what? To love instead of to your fear for guidance. Now, the Course is only talking about love and fear. It's only talking about peace or conflict. So let yourself hear the center. See, when you take the Course in Miracles slow and don't analyze it, but break it. See, but if you listen and let it explain itself, it is profound. Uh, Patricia, I so appreciate you also. Um, and that's right, Natalie. I am connecting the name of Jesus with love because Jesus and love are the same thing. According to the Course, it's only talking about love or what? Fear. So when you're reading A Course in Miracles and you get overwhelmed with the language, take a breath and then say, it's only talking about love. Let me give you an example. Let's take the first sentence in paragraph three again. It says, you have very little trust in me as yet, but it will increase as you turn more and more often to me instead of to your ego for guidance. So, if you keep listening to your ego, if you keep listening to your fear for guidance, if you keep going to your anger for guidance, if you keep going to your upset for guidance, if you keep going to attack thoughts for guidance, if you keep going to separation thoughts for guidance, 
then you will not develop trust in love, trust in Jesus. If I'm going to develop trust in Jesus, I've got to turn to Jesus for guidance. I have to ask Jesus what to do. I have to start acting like Jesus actually exists. Jesus is not someone that existed 2,000 years ago. The Jesus of A Course in Miracles exists right now because we are not bodies. Jesus is not, is not a body. We are spiritual beings. Jesus is a spiritual being. We are love. Jesus is love. We are not these bodies. We have these bodies to communicate love to each other. This, this is not Earl Purdy. This is not Earl Purdy. This is not me. This, this, this is not me. This body is not Earl Purdy. Your body is not you. Your body is a way to communicate. It is a way to express love while our vision is still so dim and we are so asleep and we are so unaware of our true selves that we think we are separate bodies. So as long as you think you are a body and as long as I think I am a body, then we have to let love come through us as best it can through a body. So turning to Jesus is not turning to a man. Turning to Jesus is turning to your invisible, unlimited spiritual brother who is a part of you, who is a part of me, who channels A Course in Miracles to us to give us a way to remove the blocks to love. We have Jesus of the Course in Miracles as a guide. You don't trust in the Jesus of a Course in Miracles because you do not turn to Jesus for advice and guidance. You're not asking love to guide you. So you don't trust love when you don't ask it to guide you. Christ consciousness is love consciousness. So let's take the first sentence again. You have very little trust in me as yet, says Jesus of the Course in Miracles. But the trust will increase. When? It will increase as you turn more and more often to me instead of to you for guidance. The ego is who you think you are. See, Earl Purdy is an ego. Earl Purdy is a concept. Earl Purdy is an idea. Earl Purdy is a, the part of the mind that thinks it's separate, the part of the mind that thinks it can be afraid. So the truth is, your ego is your concept of who you are. The ego is a self-concept. So the Course in Miracles is saying to us, look, you need to turn to Jesus more and more. If you're going to be an advanced student of the Course in Miracles, you've got to get over the Jesus stuff. We're not talking about the Jesus that people are talking about usually that we hear about every day. We're talking about the unconditionally loving elder brother, Jesus, that the Course in Miracles is talking about. He just told us that we don't trust him, her, it, because we don't turn to Jesus for guidance. We turn to our ego for guidance. We, we turn to our past learning for guidance. We turn to fear for guidance. The results that sentence number two, paragraph three says, the results will convince you. Now, what is it that will convince you? Results. 
results. The reason why I still study the Course in Miracles and teach the Course in Miracles after 38 years, it's the results. I have never, ever truly, sincerely practiced what the Course in Miracles teaches. I have never, ever sincerely done what the Course in Miracles teaches and not gotten the benefit, not gotten the result. When people tell me they study the Course in Miracles and they're, and they're still just as upset, just as freaked out, just as unhappy, I'm sorry, you're not doing what you're being told. You, if you do what the Course in Miracles tells you to do, it will work. It will work every single time. There's a difference between thinking I'm doing the Course in Miracles and actually doing a Course in Miracles. So Jesus says, you know what? You have very little trust in me as yet, but your trust in me is going to increase. Your trust in me is going to increase as you turn more to me instead of to your fear for guidance. The results of turning to me, see, just pretend I'm talking for Jesus for a minute, and I think it'll be easier for you to hear it. You have very little trust in me as yet, but your trust in me is going to increase. It's going to increase as you turn more and more to me instead of to yourself for guidance. As you turn to me instead of turning to your ego for guidance, your trust in me is going to increase as you turn more and more to me instead of your fear for guidance. The results will convince you increasingly, increasingly, the more you turn to Jesus for guidance, the more you turn to love for guidance, the more you turn to truth for guidance, the results are going to convince you more and more what? That this choice, what choice? The choice to turn to Jesus instead of the choice to turn to your ego is the only sane choice you can make. Now, what is the only sane choice you can make? What is the only choice that's sane that a person can make? What is the only choice that's the sane choice? The sane choice is turning to Jesus for guidance. The sane choice is turning to love for guidance. The only sane choice a person can make is to turn to love for guidance. The only sane choice that you can make is to turn to Jesus of the Course in Miracles for guidance. And what, the reason why I said Jesus of the Course in Miracles is because I'm trying to help people separate the old idea of Jesus that they may have learned that was frightening to them through the ego from their childhood to the Jesus that's, that's, that's the unconditionally loving Jesus. You know, the thing that I've noticed is that people don't have a problem talking about Buddha or talking about, you know, other other spiritual masters from around the world. But when you mention Jesus, everybody freaks out. And that's because they have a wrong perception of Jesus. I had a wrong perception of Jesus. I had the perception of Jesus that I learned as a child. And that perception of Jesus was frightening. And so therefore I got turned off. And I got turned off to the whole idea of Jesus. And the Course in Miracles is saying, yeah, uh, that's why you can't trust Jesus. That's why you don't trust Jesus. That's why that the the, the and if you uh, if you grew up in other religions and other spiritual faiths like you know Jewish for instance, that Jesus is the ultimate no no. And I understand that, but we're talking about what love. Jesus is just we're just another name for love, and love is the only sane choice you can make. Love is the only sane choice you can make. Then, okay, let's go to the next sentence. No one who learns from experience that one choice brings peace and joy, while another choice brings chaos and disaster, needs additional convincing. So, so... Who is it that doesn't need additional convincing to turn to Jesus and love? Who is it that's a satisfied customer? Who is it that doesn't need to be convinced anymore to turn to love for guidance, to turn to Jesus for guidance? Uh, the person that sees that when they choose to turn to Jesus and love for guidance, they get peace and joy. And when they turn to their ego, that they go through chaos and disaster. So how can you tell if a person is choosing for their ego. How can you tell if a person is choosing through their ego? They are drama kings and queens. 
If you are a drama queen, you are choosing through your ego. If you are a drama king, you are making choices that you are listening to your ego. You're listening to the wrong voice if your life is full of drama. If you are a drama queen, if you are a drama king, your life is always full of chaos and drama and lack, chaos and drama and lack, and upset, and separation, and disagreements, and misperceptions. You are not making the same choice. We heard right here, the same choice is to turn to Jesus for guidance. The same choice is to turn to love for guidance. You could say the same choice is to turn to the Course in Miracles for guidance, if that's your spiritual path. If you turn to the Course in Miracles, Jesus, love, and you see as a result of that, you experience peace and joy. And then you also see that if you turn to your ego, if you turn to your fear, if you turn to the things that you've learned from the world and you experience chaos and disaster, then you are a person that eventually won't need to be convinced anymore that you want to turn to Jesus. You want to turn to the truth. You want to turn to the course. Whenever anything happens in my life, whenever I get upset about anything, whenever I make myself upset about anything, I immediately go straight to the Course in Miracles and I read the Course in Miracles or listen to the Course in Miracles until I feel some form of peace. Because at the point that you feel peace, that's how you will know that you finally heard the voice for the truth and God. If you're not feeling peace, you haven't heard God's voice. If you're not feeling peace, if you're not feeling peace and joy and happiness, you're not listening to God's voice. How do you know if you're not listening to God's voice? You are experiencing chaos and disaster. So the Course in Miracles says, uh, learning uh, sentence four, paragraph three on page 68 says, learning through rewards is more effective than learning through pain. So if you really want to learn in a way that's effective, what do you do? Okay, so if I was really going to teach somebody something and I wanted to teach them in a way that would really be effective, I would teach them through rewards. I would reward them for what they have learned. So if you want to make teaching and learning effective, you would want a person to learn through rewards. So we are learning through rewards. When you learn through Jesus, when you learn through love, you will feel like you are experiencing rewards. And that is a much more effective way to learn than learning through pain. Learning through pain is not the most effective way to learn. Let go of the thought, no pain, no gain, is a very unconscious thought. Learning through pain is not as effective as learning through joy. Learning through pain is not as effective as learning through rewards. So when God is teaching you, you are not going through pain. When you're listening to God, when you're listening to the truth, when you're listening to love correctly, then you don't have perceptions of pain. You don't have painful perceptions. Because pain is what? An ego illusion. So what is ego? Uh, fear. What is illusion? A false idea. The Course in Miracles defines illusion as a false idea. Pain is a fearful false idea. Pain is, is an ego illusion. Pain is a pain is an illusion of a fearful mind. So pain and ego are the same thing. Pain and ego are the same thing. That's right, Diana. When you learn through love, you learn through reward. Learning through fear is learning through pain and can never induce more than a temporary effect. So what did that just tell us? It's much more effective to learn through rewards than it is to learn through pain. 
Then we were told that pain is how you know you are having a fearful thought that is, a, that is based on an illusion, which is a false idea. So if you get to the point that you associate pain with the ego, then pain can be used to free you from the ego. Do you know that the way you use pain to free you from the ego is to go, I'm going through pain, I'm having a false idea right now based on fear. Pain is an ego illusion. I'm feeling a lot of hurt in this relationship. That means that I'm having an ego illusion. I'm having some kind of a false idea, illusion, that is based on fear, ego. Pain is an ego illusion. Pain and fear are the same thing. Pain is fear. Pain is the result of fear and separation. Pain and fear are the same thing. Pain and the ego are the same thing. It says it right here. Pain is an ego illusion. And check out the rest of that sentence. It says, and can never induce more than a temporary effect. Pain will always be temporary. Pain and the ego can only produce a temporary effect. Learning through pain. When you, when you beat the hell out of somebody, then it only has a temporary effect. Pain always produces only a temporary change. So anything that you are doing through the ego, anything that you are doing through pain and fear and a lack of indebtedness, uh, not listening to the guidance of love in Jesus, the Course says, then whatever you do, whatever you learn, it's only going to be temporary. It's not going to last. That's how you know that love as we do love is not real love because our love doesn't last. It's not permanent. It's based on behavior. It's based on agreements. It's very conditional. That's why it doesn't last. So what we call love is really a very attractive form of fear. What the human being calls love is an, is an attractive form of fear. It's a fear that you like. It's a fear that you are attracted to. Real love produces permanent effects. Real love is the same choice. So it's, then it says in paragraph, let's take a look. Then it says in paragraph uh, three on page 68, uh, sentence number five in the Courts and Miracles Foundation for Inner Peace Virgin, it says, the rewards of God, however, are immediately recognized as eternal. So, <clears throat> so how, do you, how do you immediately recognize that you have received a reward from God? How do you immediately recognize if something comes from God? How can you immediately recognize if something comes from love? How do you immediately recognize if something comes from God? I'm going to tell you. This is how you immediately recognize if, if you are experiencing a reward of God. It's eternal. What? If it comes from God, it's permanent. If it comes from God, it's eternal. If it comes from love, it's permanent. It increases and it's permanent. There is no break in it. There is no ending to it. You, the, the way you can always tell if something is coming from God is that it's eternal. It is constant. It is permanent. If it's not permanent, it's not of God. If it's not eternal, it's not of God. If it's not eternal, it is not of Jesus. If it's not eternal, it is not of love. It, if, if it's not eternal, it's not of freedom. Anything that's real never ends. Anything that is real is eternal. It never ends. It's permanent. 
So the Course says, do you want to recognize instantly if it's something that's come from God? If it's something that comes from God, then it is eternal. It does not end. It is permanent. It never ends. It's constant. It's permanent. If it comes from God, it is joyful. <laughs> you know, sometimes after all these years, I, I go, man, how could you, how could you not have seen how clear and simple Jesus is communicating to you, brother? You really let your ego keep you from really hearing this for a long time. And so it won't take you as long as it took me. The purpose of a relationship is to save time. I've done tons of study for you. So that means take advantage of my 38 years of obsession with the Course in Miracles. That's why I work with the book. That's why I ask you to have a book with you, especially on Thursdays when we do Hardcore Course in Miracles because I'm going to go through the book with you so that you will see I'm not analyzing this. If you will notice, I have not been analyzing this. Forget analyzing the Course in Miracles. Hear what it's saying. Let me give you an example. In paragraph three, sentence five, it says, the rewards of God, however, are immediately recognized as eternal. Since this recognition, what recognition? The recognition that the rewards of God are permanent and eternal. This recognition is made by you and not the ego. Your ego, the part of you that has been programmed by the world, the part of you that has fear and guilt and doubt and suspicion, the part of you that believes only in what's temporary, the part of you that believes only in things of this world, the part of you that believes only in space and time and bodies and separation, that part of you could never recognize a reward of God because the ego is the part of us that only recognizes temporary things and things that are physical and things that change. But if you are in touch with that other self, your real self, it instantly recognizes when it has gotten a reward from God. It instantly recognizes when it has gotten a reward from love. Because when you get a re reward from God, when you get a reward from love, what you recognize it as eternal. Since this recognition is made by you and not the ego, the recognition, what recognition? The recognition that the rewards of God are eternal itself establishes that you and your ego cannot be identical. You are not your ego. You are not your ego. You are not your fear. You are not your fear. You are not your ego. You are not your anger. You are not your ego. You are not your guilt. You are not your ego. You are not your body. You are not your ego. You are not your lack. You are not your sickness. You are not your ego. You and your ego are not the same thing. It says it right here. If you can recognize that the rewards of love are eternal, if you can even entertain the idea of permanent love, then you are recognizing that you and the ego are not the same thing because your ego can't even recognize anything that's real and constant. The Course says, you may believe that you have already accepted the difference between you and your ego. You may believe that you already have accepted the difference between you and your ego, but you are by no means convinced as yet that you and your fear are not the same. You think you are the, per the person that gets upset. You think you are the being that gets afraid. You think you are the being that dies. So the course is saying, you are not convinced as yet that you are not your ego. That's the same as saying, you are not convinced as yet that you are not a woman. You are not uh, convinced as yet that you are not a man. You are not convinced as yet that you are not that being that gets upset. You are by no means convinced as yet. The next sentence, the fact that you believe you must escape from the ego shows this. Shows what? The fact that you believe you must escape from the ego shows you that you are not convinced 
that you are not your ego. The mere fact that you're saying you need to escape from your ego means that you really think you are connected to your ego and that you are your ego. The Course is saying that the fact that you believe that you must escape from your fear shows that you still believe that you and your fear are connected. But you cannot, and this, this sentence at the end is just, it should be bronzed. Check it out. It says, the fact that you believe you must escape from the ego, the fact that you, you I got to escape from my ego, I got to get rid of my ego. The fact that you believe you must escape from the ego shows that you are not convinced that you're not your ego. But you cannot escape from the ego by humbling it or controlling it or punishing it. If you want to get past your fearful mind, if you want to get past your guilty mind, if you want to get past your ego, then you have to stop trying to humble your ego. You have to stop trying to control your ego. You have to stop trying to punish your ego. That's another way of saying stop trying to humble yourself. Stop trying to control your little self. Stop trying to punish your little self. You cannot escape from the ego by humbling it or controlling it or punishing it. You cannot escape from your fear by humbling it or controlling it or punishing it. You cannot escape from the ego. So that doggone ego, I hate my ego. I need to punish my ego. I'm angry at my ego. All of those things increase the ego. All of those attitudes make the fear real. They make the anger real. You cannot escape the ego by humbling it, controlling it, or punishing it. You will not escape fear. You will not escape the part of you that goes through fear and anger by punishing it. You will not escape the part of you that creates pain by punishing any part of yourself. You cannot punish yourself and escape from the part of you that causes you fear and upset. I repeat, you cannot escape from the ego by humbling it or controlling it or punishing it. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to do a recap of what we've covered so far. I love you. 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 I'm indebted to you. I'm indebted to you. I'm indebted to you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm indebted to you. I'm indebted to you. I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to you. I fully appreciate you. I fully appreciate you. I fully appreciate all of you. I appreciate you taking the time to be here live to join with me, even though you know you can watch repost and replays, and I hope you share this. It means a lot to me that you take time out of your busy schedule to join with the other Mighty Companions live here, commenting. It's awesome. If you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, you can just go to my website, www.earlperdy.com, P-U-R-D-Y, earlperdy.com. I want to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. I want to take these 40 years of doing A Course in Miracles and my over 40 years of being an astrologer and a numerologist and bring it into a session between you and me where I go through every part of you through your astrological and numerological chart and the information that spirit gives me through that which got me on the spiritual path that led me to the course and also I'm going to take all of the years of study and practice of the Course in Miracles and bring that into our personal session called a clarity session that is about removing your blocks so that you can experience the kind of life that you've always wanted to experience in your heart. There is a financial investment for this and I deserve to receive that just like you deserve to receive for the things that you do. Uh, but you're worth the investment, and I give you everything I have from my heart. It's called a clarity session. Go to my website, earlperdy.com, 
and it explains all about it and you can self book an appointment right there on the website immediately very simple I love 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 working with you please spread the word about these broadcasts Tuesday night 7 p.m. Mountain Time I do the way of mastery on Facebook live Thursdays hardcore course and miracles at 7 p.m. Sundays at 1 o'clock p.m. all Mountain Time I do another course in miracles class in front of a live audience Go to the Earl Purdy page on Facebook to watch these live broadcasts. Go to the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. You can watch these broadcasts even if you're not a member of, of Facebook by going to www.facebook.com facebook.com forward slash Earl Purdy live. Please follow this Earl Purdy page. I love you. I'm so grateful to you. Um, so let's go through this really quick and do a review. I, you all did some incredible comments, and I always go back to, through the comments. The course, So what did we hear in the first paragraph in the Lord's for God? Well, it said that if you have a frightened, fearful ego mind, you don't really recognize the source of threat. That when you're upset, you don't understand the situation as it is. And the Course also told us that it speaks of the ego as if it's a separate thing so that we won't take the ego lightly. But it can't let it go at that, or you will believe that you're in conflict all the time. The ego is nothing more than a belief you have about yourself. The ego is a fearful thought. The ego is a fearful thought. You have another life, that real self in you, that's never affected by anything that your ego does, anything that your fear does. If you really want to escape from fear, if you really want to escape from your illusions, do you know that we were told that we have to realize we're totally and completely indebted to each other? That we need to recognize that we, we owe each other the debt of love. And when we recognize that we owe each other the debt of love, then we are going to come as close to wisdom as we can possibly come. That's as close to true knowledge that you can come to. It's when you recognize that you are indebted to me and I'm indebted to you in love. <clears throat> then Jesus said something that was awesome. The Jesus of the course told us, say, you know what, you guys don't have a whole lot of trust in me. And the reason why you don't have trust in me Jesus, the reason why you don't have trust in me is because you don't turn to me for guidance. And if you don't ever turn to me for guidance, you're not going to learn to trust me. And then we were told, you keep turning to your ego. You keep turning to what you've learned in the past. That's the ego. You keep turning to your fear and letting your fear guide you. And the Course says, if you keep letting your fear guide you, instead of turning to love for guidance, you're never going to really trust love. So you got to turn to the truth. You got to turn to Jesus for guidance. Then we were told that the results of doing that, that the results of doing that is going to convince us that that's the only sane choice that we need to make. And if you keep on listening to the course and letting Jesus and the truth guide you, then he says you're gonna have peace and joy instead of chaos and disaster. And then more and more you're gonna to turn to the truth you're going to turn to the course because it's much more rewarding to learn through rewards than it is to learn through pain so the course in miracles teaches us through rewards Jesus teaches us through rewards true love teaches us through rewards not through pain you don't forget that statement no pain no gain let go of that statement no pain no gain that is not true. We are being taught through rewards. This is not a path of learning through pain. We were told that pain is an ego illusion. Pain is always coming from your ego. Pain is never coming from your true self. And when you learn through pain, it just produces a temporary effect. Don't forget, pain just produces a temporary effect. Then the Course in Miracles says, 
How can you tell when you are experiencing the rewards of God? How can you tell when you are experiencing the rewards of God? If you are experiencing something from God, if you are experiencing a reward of God, if you are experiencing the love, what comes from real love, anything that comes from real love is eternal. The rewards of God are eternal. The rewards of God are eternal. The rewards of God are eternal. What does eternal mean? What does eternal mean? Eternal means constant, permanent, ever, lasting. Eternal is constant. It's permanent. It's everlasting. If it's God, it's eternal. It's constant. It's joyful. It's everlasting. If it's coming from God, it's joyful. It's eternal. It's permanent. It's constant. If it's coming from God, if it's coming from God, you and your ego are not the same. You are not the ego. You are not the fear. You are not the upset. You are not the body. You are not the guilt. You are not the separation. You are not the ego. 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 You are love. You are not the ego. You are not the ego. You are not the ego. You are love. You are not the fear. You are not the fear. You are not the fear. You are the love. You are not the anger. You are not the sickness. You are not the lack. You are love. You may think that you are not your ego, but we were told, but you are not really convinced as yet, because as long as you think you need to escape from the ego, you still think you are the ego. As long as you think you need to escape from the ego, you are still not convinced that you are not the ego. If you think you have to escape from the ego, then you are not convinced as yet. And, and I'm going to say this one sentence over and over again. You cannot escape from the ego by humbling it or controlling it or punishing it. You cannot escape from the ego by humbling the ego. You cannot escape from the ego by controlling it. You cannot escape from the ego by controlling it. You cannot escape from the ego. You cannot escape from the ego by punishing it, by punishing it. You cannot escape from the ego by punishing it, by punishing it. So mighty companions, listen to what we covered over and over at least a couple of more times. Take a breath. Let yourself hear this. This was a very powerful session on the ego. As you probably noticed, I call it Hardcore Course in Miracles. And I call it Hardcore Course in Miracles because just like Dana just said, the profound simplicity of it is what makes it hard. So how can you tell if something is coming from love? If something is coming from love, it's eternal. It's permanent. It never ends and it never changes if it's coming from real love. If it's coming from real love, it never changes. If it's coming from real love, it only expands. And it was created to expand. So it's not really changing because it's doing what it was created to do. You will learn through rewards. God only teaches through rewards. Love only teaches through rewards. Okay. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in to Hardcore Course in Miracles. I hope you'll have a personal session with me. It's time to take it deeper. It's time to invest in yourself. I love you. I appreciate you. Good to see you online, CJ. I appreciate you all. You are awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you, Jaina. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, all of you. Mwah! I love you. 
And I always take a moment to listen back to it myself. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. See you, Victoria. Bye-bye.